to Adobe Live. Thank you all so much for joining us. My name is Cody and I will be your host for the next hour. Here on Power Prompts, if you've never watched us before, it is our goal to empower you to power through your art block. Every month we create a theme and every week we have a drawing prompt based around that theme. Uh, this month's theme, if you haven't watched, is April showers so far and today's prompt is Cozy Rainy Window. Um, feel free to participate with any of these prompts by uploading your work to Instagram with hashtag Adobe Live Power Prompts. And towards the end of the show, we will actually be going over some of the amazing community entries that we have. We have actually quite a few entries, so I don't know if we'll be able to get through all of them just like last week. We had so many amazing entries, so but I will I will do my best to get through as many as we can. Um, and welcome in everyone. It's so good to see you all. Hey, Sam, Gareth, Rob, Steve, good to see you guys. Thank you so much for joining me today. Um, today's prompt is actually um, very, um, very on theme for my weather today uh put in chat if it's raining for you guys apparently it's supposed to thunderstorm for us tonight um and i saw a few other people on my instagram feed saying that it's raining so uh it was kind of uh it, it kind of worked out today it's funny how things do that um all right so um let's hop on over to um the ipad screen here and i will show you guys what we're going to be working on um Usually, if you guys have never seen the show, I have chat vote on a particular um, piece of my uh, paintings that we work on on this show. And um, whether it be like composition or um, uh, the color palette or character or anything like that. So today we have, um, uh, today we have uh, a couple of things I'm gonna have you guys vote on. But first, I want you guys to vote on the animal. I'm not going to show you guys what the context is yet. <laughs> just for fun, I just thought I would have you guys vote out of context um, and just see what happens after that. Um, hey, Colby, welcome. Hey, Bliss, good to see you guys. <laughs> Bliss says, uh, Cody coming through with the summer hair, don't care. Oh, yes. Whoosh. <laughs> um, good to see you all. Hello, hello. So. If you guys would like to vote, just put your um, put your votes in chat, just one, two, or three, or you can just put the word in chat, and we will be able to uh, proceed. We got we got um, for our animals. By the way, I'll just list them off. We got one is frog, two is bear, and three is fox. Uh, <laughs> frog for rain, definitely. I yeah, that's kind of part of why I chose frog for one of the options because I felt like it was it kind of worked out. Uh, frog, uh, Keith says fox. Hi, Keith. Welcome. Jacqueline, welcome. Good to see you guys. Uh, Steve says fox. Rob says fox. Colby says bear. Thanks, Colby. I had to put my I had to put my favorite bear in there because if, if you guys are familiar with my work, I draw a lot of bears. <laughs> Bliss says three. Wow, looks like fox is winning. Okay, um, I guess we will go with fox then. That'll be pretty cute. <laughs> Gareth says fox chasing a frog jumping into a bear's mouth. Oh my gosh. <laughs> okay. So I went ahead and started the sketch ahead of time. And I wanted to, um, because I, I, I felt like I wanted to spend the majority of this stream coloring, um, because the last couple of streams we've spent uh, doing the sketch. So we have our headless character here right now, our little headless horseman. Um, but I am going to go ahead and add a little fox head onto this. And uh, then we will have our little fox character and we can proceed from there. <laughs> Keith said I could do that with my hair 15 years ago. Sadly, it has relocated no address left behind. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> That's hilarious. 
Hey, RB, welcome. How are you guys doing? Okay. Uh, let's see. I have all of my sketches or sketch layers here in this folder. So let's just go ahead and start. I, I typically like to um, keep with simple shapes. Um, so let's see. With my fox head, actually, I think I'm going to move the body down slightly, or I might just kind of scrunch it down a little bit slightly, just so we have a little bit more space for the face. Face, face. We got a cute little, cute little spring planter box here going on with our little cottage, cottage shutters. I thought it was very thematic. And then also, of course, since it's supposed to be a cozy, rainy window, I'm going to uh, put in some rain. But I wanted to do it on stream because I wanted to show you guys a fun technique. Um, well, not really fun, but an easy technique to create rain. Um, OK. Fun can be easy. Easy can be fun, right? OK. So let's start off with a round shape here. I'm gonna kind of make it a little bit more wide, a little bit more of an oval shape, actually. I think I'm gonna refine it down a little bit, a little bit more wide than it is tall. I'm gonna move it up. Don't forget, you can also use this resize uh, shape. And I, I use that a lot to kind of like refine um, refine my shapes that I make so I don't have to get it exactly perfect when I originally sketch it. It's just all really helpful and it makes things a lot faster. Okay, so, and I am going to, to make the little like foxes or at least the way that I draw them kind of have like, they always have like these little like tufts of hair almost that kind of like come out to create kind of like, um, almost like, like little cheeks, right? I kind of have like a very unique face shape. Got a little bit of a tangent there, but we can fix that. That's all right. So I'm going to just erase that. Hey, Odari, welcome. How are you doing? Just kind of refining this shape down a little bit. And we can also, of course, add in the little fox ears. Very simple shapes we got going on here. Just some simple triangles. And we're just drawing, we're drawing through too. And I'm not even worrying about what kind of shape. Um, I'm not worrying about like, instead of, if you guys have never heard of what drawing through is, basically if I wasn't drawing through, I would be drawing this part of the ear and then this part of the ear without drawing the rest of the triangle. But that can make it a little bit difficult on yourself, actually, because it, it can make it hard to like fully imagine what shape you're drawing. Um, so instead, we're not going to worry about the, the lines going over top of where we don't want it to be, like obviously because this ear is going to be behind the window pane. Um, we'll, that's okay because we can just go back and erase it afterwards. So, but at least this way, we can actually see the full triangle that this shape makes. And we know that this is actually the shape that we really want. Let's see, so now we know that we have that really nice triangle. Now we can just go back and erase these bits. And we can even go back and erase this too. Something like that. And then of course I can also go back and erase the little part of the sweater that we don't want showing either.
And also, you know, fun, uh, fun thing we can do with the fox too, is that since we have all of this like negative space here, maybe we can put in his little fluffy tail too. This little fox tail. The tail is really iconic for a fox. So that can also help distinguish our character and it can help um, the, the audience view our character as a fox. And they immediately see the tail and they're like, oh, okay, it's a fox. We'll put like the end of the fox tail usually has like, the white, the white fur. It's like orange and then white on the end. Odari says I draw through all the time. It works out better. Yes, definitely. I I um, used to not draw through when I was first getting into drawing for many years. And then um, I kind of had to force myself to do it because it almost, at first it feels wrong, like to, to force yourself to draw, especially like when you're drawing um, like anatomy and stuff. I know a lot of people recommend drawing through uh, for drawing simple cylinders um, and simple shapes to help you really understand the uh, the 3D aspect of um, the anatomy shapes. Um, and so drawing through can really help. Um, okay, so let's go back and let's make sure that all of our lines are cleaned up behind um, here because so we don't want anything showing in front of the window pane because our character is inside right how are you guys how are you guys doing this week so far by the way are you getting into any creative endeavors or is it a little early in the week do you usually start working on on fun, creative things early in the week or is it more do you have to like ramp up before you get into it? There's some little steam coming off his little cup and maybe we will um, we'll kind of now that we know uh, the shape of the character's hand, what that's going to be. Maybe we'll angle this down a little bit and maybe he's got just a little paw, a, a dainty little fox paw. Something like that. I think I might, maybe I'll make his mug like polka dotted or something. I always like to try to incorporate some kind of pattern into my work. Um, it kind of just like makes it, gives it a little bit more interest, you know? Got a little, little polka dots, you know? Liven it up a little bit for spring. Cute. Okay, and don't forget to save your work, everyone, if you're working on anything, don't forget to save. Um, let's see, one second, you guys. I'm gonna actually open up some reference. Um, you're not gonna be able to see it because it's gonna be on my, my computer monitor, but I'm actually, funny enough, I'm opening up some of my old artwork that I drew of a fox. Um, let's see. Um, I did it a couple, oh, there we go. We pulled up Instagram, cool. Um, this one, this one here, I actually wanted to pull up, um, just for a reference on how I did the nose shape. Um, and I actually am noticing that I kind of want to make the lines from the edge of the, the head and straight up to the ears, all one single straight line. Um, I think I like that look better rather than having it curved the way that I do right now. Um, and then also keeping it really simple for the fur lines as well. Um, okay, cool. I will keep that in mind. Okay, going back to working. 
since now we have that thought, I am going to go back to the head. Also, you guys, I reference my work all the time. Um, it, it sounds silly to do, um, but it, it is very necessary, especially if you're, uh, you're like me and you're kind of trying to keep a consistent style. Um, <laughs> it, sometimes I, I know that I drew something one way that I remember liking the way that I drew it. And um, it, I completely forget how I drew it, you know? So I have to go back and reference my own work. Um, don't feel strange about doing that if you ever feel like you need to, because I know a lot of artists that do that. Uh, it is a totally normal thing, you know? I mean, our, our human brains cannot remember every single little detail of every single thing. Uh, and I mean, that goes for reference in general too. Okay. So yeah, I like that. I like that a lot better. Even more of a simple shape going around. I'm actually going to angle this a little bit more. And then of course, foxes have black ears. So we're going to draw in the little insides of his ears here. That's another very um, telling feature of the fox. Hey, Annika, how are you doing? Good to see you. Wow, it's so great to have you in the chat. <clears throat> Uh, Sam says, where and what do you usually use for reference or is it just your own work? Sometimes, so I use my own work for reference. Um, I'll use other people's work for reference too. Um, like if I come across any work that I feel inspired by, um, I'll kind of use that as inspiration. I of course don't copy somebody else's work, but I'll use it as inspiration to kind of recreate it in my own way. Um, and then I also will use animal reference, um, obviously, because I draw a lot of animal characters. Um, and then I also, I've something that I've felt, I feel like has really helped me in, uh, in instead of just simply looking at animal, like photography for um, animal images, sometimes I'll look up like clip art, like I'll look up, um, uh, like if I'm, let's say I'm searching a bear character or something, I'll, I'll Google, um, bear clip art or bear illustrated uh clip art um and sometimes it like i'm if i'm looking for a simplified shape that i just can't figure out for myself looking at different versions of clip art can really help narrow down um those simple shapes for me because if you're just looking at a realistic photograph sometimes it's hard to uh take uh, go straight from realism to uh, really simple shapes. So kind of finding something that's like in the middle of that, um, can be really helpful. Okay. So moving on, let's go ahead and add in his little nose here. I think, let's see, do we want his nose or actually since he's facing forward, it might be best to do it like this. In the image that I just showed you guys, it was at an angle, but he is facing forward here. <laughs> big, big honker. Yes, he's. this isn't just his nose. This is also his muzzle. <laughs> here. Here's his nose. <laughs> There we go. <laughs> and then give him a little, a little smile there. And we will also separate out 
his fur color because for foxes, like the bottom part of their fur, like going from the bottom of their chin down their belly and the inside of their legs are, is all white. But the rest of the fur is orange. So we kind of have that little bit of a distinction there. Kind of looks like he has a mustache now, but I think it will look a little bit less like a mustache once we just add the color in. <laughs> Okay, that's pretty cute. Uh, Annika says, um, how do you decide the stopping point for details while sketching? Uh, it's kind of like a gut feeling. Sometimes I will do like a, a full on sketch like this, like a I, this for me is a refined sketch. Um, and underneath this, I didn't have a rough sketch. I just did this and refined it. like. Like I didn't draw these flowers, for instance, and then redraw them as a refined sketch. These are my initial lines for the sketch. Um, sometimes if that works out, I won't have to refine the sketch at all. I'll just do that, boom, boom, boom. And then we're moving on to color. Sometimes too, I'll do a thumbnail and just blow it up. And if I know I can like visualize it in my head well enough, the details, I actually will skip refining it altogether and just go straight to color too. Um, so it's kind of just like a gut feeling. Like I said, if I know how to fill in the details with color, um, then I'll just go straight to color. But for this one, I felt like especially since, I don't know if you were here earlier, the chat actually voted on the character animal um, and uh, we ended up with Fox. And so um, I wanted to make sure that I got all of the details on that. Uh, the rest of the sketch I actually did before the stream. Um, so I wanted to spend the majority of this stream on coloring. So that is actually where I'm going to stop with the sketch right then. Actually, first, I lied. First, we are going to, before I move on, the last thing that I want to do with this sketch is I wanted to show you guys a trick on how to make some really quick rain sketching lines. Um, like for instance, sometimes, I don't know about you guys, but sometimes like if I want to add in rain, like, and sometimes I want to add in rain at an angle, you know, it's like, okay, well, this, this kind of looks like rain, but it's like kind of, impossible to get all of the lines like coming in at the same exact angle and that's usually like coming in at a really nice angle and all of the lines are um parallel with each other that's what's really gonna like sell it as rain and drawing all of that by hand is very difficult i personally can't really do it um so sometimes what i do is I'll uh, pull out the handy dandy um, little ruler tool. And I will actually draw them straight up and straight down. I've just today, I don't know if you guys are having this issue. Um, I don't know if this is maybe an issue with Fresco, but I just noticed today that my ruler is not snapping anymore. I don't know if that's a setting that I accidentally turned off um, or if it's like a, an issue with Fresco. But anyway, we're at 90, per, uh, 90 degrees right here. We're straight up and straight down. And I am on a separate layer. Make sure you're doing this on a separate layer. And I am just going to draw some random little lines, all of different angle, uh, not all of different lengths. Um, and kind of spaced out differently. And then I'm gonna move it over and I'm gonna draw different lines again, just kind of randomly in different spaces. We're going to also move the ruler um, in different spots here. Some, some spaces are gonna be wider, some spaces are gonna be closer together. I'm sure you guys can already see where I'm going with this. So now we have raindrops that are straight up and straight down, but it's like, Cody, you, I don't want that. <laughs> so 
let's turn off the ruler for a second. I actually have another layer that I created earlier with the same exact lines here. Um, here, this I'll just use the one that I just made. Um, so let's transform it. And also, if you feel like your lines ended up being too close together, you can also just widen that out like that. And then just woo, angle that rain. And you don't even need to either, you, you don't necessarily need to make a ton of rain because you can also just use this layer and then copy and paste it too. <laughs> And I also have, let's see, where was my other layer? I had this one that I made earlier. Let's see if I like that one better. Whoop. Something like that. We'll just widen this guy. And I also want to make sure I can go in and erase some of the raindrops that I don't necessarily want. Like for instance, I'll probably go back and erase some of these guys up here. Um, I might just move this guy a little bit so we don't have too much of a tangent. Um, I might uh, erase that guy and that guy. And maybe some of these drops that are kind of like covering his face a little bit too much also. I might redraw one here maybe. And maybe a smaller one up here possibly. Um, and get rid of that one and that one. Something like that. And then again, like I said, if you feel like you have, um, some space that you still want to fill. You don't have to necessarily draw any more lines. You could just duplicate the layer and just move it on over. And we can just fill some of the space here that we are missing. And then erase again, whatever you don't want. And I think I'm going to move this little guy up a little bit. Don't want any, any stragglers that are like too far away from the composition because it might be a little distracting if there's one like way down here or something like that. Um, so that's kind of like the thought process that I'm having with um, moving these guys around. Cool, now we have our little rainy window, you guys. Sweet, let's save. And then we can just go ahead and condense all of these layers down. We can just select the group and then merge layers in group. And then I will go ahead and lower the opacity of the sketch and I will make a new layer and we can go ahead and start coloring. Um, so let's see. Uh, I haven't really decided on a color palette. I typically actually don't usually decide on a color palette ahead of time. Um, with the exception of the fact that I have this color palette, um, which is all of the colors that I use, um, on my artwork picked, but I don't have a more refined color palette picked for this specific image. Hi, Barbara. Uh, welcome. How are you doing? Uh, seeing the same thing out of my window right now. Me too. Uh, yes, it is raining. It is raining indeed, and it's supposed to thunderstorm later. Okay, so I'm thinking you guys tell me your opinion as well. I would love to hear your guys' opinion on um, colors. I would love to hear what you would like to see for like the tulip colors and stuff like that, because we could work from that. Uh, maybe if you guys want to suggest, uh, are we using greens this time? We will have some greens in this. Um, yes, because uh, we got all of this foliage down here on the bottom. Um, so if you guys want to suggest some colors for the tulips, um, and uh, I think I might, uh, and of course we're, we're actually, we're going to have orange in the scene too, obviously, because the fox is orange. Um, 
the question is, do we want the fox to be the only orange thing in the scene, or do we want to incorporate orange in other places? The benefit of having orange, uh, the fox be the only orange thing in the scene is that it, it can help draw attention to the character, um, which is kind of the main focal point, of course. Um, or it can also just look really cohesive, which I do a lot of the time too, is just incorporating the character's color in throughout the rest of the image. Um, so we will figure that out as we go along. Um, yellow is cheerful, pink tulips, uh, spring brighten up. Yes, yes, we should use some bright colors in, in our little planter box, shouldn't we? I think that that would be fun. Um, I think I'm gonna start with the um, the windowsill and I think I'm gonna go with like a cream color for the, uh, uh, oops, wrong brush. Let's go back to favorites here. And then I'm gonna go to uh, Kyle Webster's brush Conte Crayon. This is the brush that I use mostly for coloring. Um, as you guys can see, it has kind of like this chalky crayon texture. Um, you can get that in uh, Kyle Webster's Mega Pack, and you can download all of Kyle's brushes for free if you have a CC sub. Um, all right, so uh, the window panes, that's what I meant. I said windowsill earlier, but really it's the window panes. So we are going to color in these window panes. I feel like like white or cream colored wood is very springy. Um, it kind of lightens it up rather than having it be like a a darker wood color or anything like that. And it will uh, give some contrast against the, the darker fox orange color too. Cody Cran, as Annika likes to call it. Yes, indeed. <laughs> so we're just gonna fill in this space pretty quickly. Um, I'm actually trying, I'm really trying to um, loosen up my um, coloring process even more than I than I do have it already. Um, I really like uh, this like very sketchy uh, color pencil crayon mixed media look that I see some artists doing. Um, and like, I feel like I'm kind of like on the cusp of that with my work, but I, I also at the same time feel like I'm a little bit too precious with um, with my my crayon lines. Um, and I think that comes with doing digital too. Like I feel like that that can kind of be a hindrance with digital sometimes is that if I were working it with traditional medium, I wouldn't be able to erase my crayon, you know. Um, but with digital, I, um, kind of ha feel this need to go back and and kind of refine everything and make everything look a little bit too perfect almost. Um, and I'm trying to use undo a little less, let's say, <laughs> kind of give it a little bit more of a traditional look. Um, so yeah, that's kind of that's kind of where I'm at with my own work, I guess. Okay. So we got like a little bit of a, a cream color. And sometimes I do like to kind of go in and just get rid of the sketch for a second so we can really see what we're working with in terms of the color. I think I like the look of that. Um, and I'm not going to refine it, you guys. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna leave it the way it is. And I think I am going to, should we do white shutters or cream shutters too? I suppose let's do it on a, let's do the shutters on a separate layer. And uh, we can go in and color these really quick. And of course, the great thing about digital art, I know I just said sometimes it can be a hindrance, but also sometimes it can, it can be really great too because of things like this, where if you're unsure about a color um, with traditional work, you really have to plan all of your colors ahead of time. With digital, you don't necessarily have to do that. Um, I really like to use um, lock transparency if I'm unsure about a color. And basically that is when you create a shape and then you lock the pixels and you can color inside of that shape without going outside of the line, outside of the shape that you already previously created. So I use lock transparency a lot when I'm unsure about um, 
what colors I want to use. So I go back and change my colors quite a bit as I'm working with lock transparency. And I will show you guys how to do that in one second. Once I finish, oop, I was about to do undo, but you know what, you guys, I am just going to leave it. <laughs> I was like, ooh, I want to, I want to undo, but I'm not going to do it. I'm just going to, I'm just going to let it be, you know, there's no mistakes here. Only happy accidents as Bob Ross always says, and he was a traditional artist. So he really knows what he's talking about. Back when there was only traditional art, really. <laughs> He was like the original Adobe Live, really. Bob Ross Live. Okay. So there's our little shutters. And again, I'll turn off the sketch here. So our little shutters are looking great. And um, like I said, so free trans, uh, not free transform, um, lock transparency. So if you would like to change a color um, or you can just use uh, lock transparency for a multitude of reasons. But in this case, we're going to use it to change the color of the shutters. So if you want to highlight the layer of the shutters and then tap it again when you're in Fresco. Um, and then down at the bottom here, second from the bottom, it says lock transparency. So we're going to do that. Now it says transparency locked. And on the layer um, menu, you can see here uh, on top of the, the middle of the layer, it has like a little lock icon. So I'm going to grab a different color. Like, let's try this teal just so you guys can see the difference. A lot of the time I'll use um, to change the color, I'll just use a hard round brush just because it renders faster. I mean, it's really easy to just go over top of it because with lock transparency, you don't have to worry about losing your uh, texture or anything that you've worked so hard to create. So. I think that's a little bit too dark of a color, but like I said, it's just for uh, tutorial purposes. Um, but there, now you can, you guys can see uh, how simple that was to be able to just change the color. Um, or we could like go with like a like a yellow color for the shutters. That might be cute. Something like that. I think I kind of like that. Or um, or maybe like a like a pink color or something. I don't know. We can try different things out. I think I'm gonna stick with the, oops. I think I'm gonna stick with the, um, the yellow for now and we'll see where we go from there. Or, you know, I might even leave the shutters cream and then, um, and then bring the color back in the planter box instead. Because uh, if we're thinking about the composition of our color palette, if we have the shutters be a darker color like this, like a bright color, it might actually pull attention away from our planter box, you know, because like we really want like not only the attention to be on the fox, but also I feel like the secondary character in this illustration is the planter box. So we want all of those bright flowers and attention to be on the flowers, right? So if we did keep the shutters cream, then that would kind of like push them to the background a little bit more and it wouldn't be so striking and it wouldn't take as much attention away from the flowers. So now that we got that uh, like kind of like that thought process out in the open there, I feel like that makes more sense to keep them just this cream color. Um, or even, you know, a cool, a cool other trick that I really like to do. Um, I'll show you guys here. I'm gonna hide this layer for a second really quick. And I'm gonna take this cream color again. Um, I like to do this sometimes to kind of vary, um, vary up my shapes and um, just to kind of give it a little bit of a different look. I'm actually not going to color the shutters at all, and I'm just going to outline them. So the interior color will actually end up being the background color, and the outline is the cream color that we're using here. I'll, if that makes sense, I will show you right now what that would look like. So, whoops, whew, wrong brush. 
Uh, let's go back to, let's go to all and then go to recent. And then we got Conte Crane again. And I'm actually going to lower my brush size just a tad here, a little bit more, because we don't need as big of a brush because we're not filling in that space. So if we outline it, it might actually push it back to the background even more or it could not, you know, like that's just the great thing of experimenting and we will just see what we like best um, once we get this filled in here. Um, a really good example if you guys um, are on my Instagram or anything, you want to see an example of this outline in different contexts, this outline technique. Um, I did an Alice in Wonderland piece a while back, maybe like a, a year or two ago. Um, and I did some of the, the um, details in the background um, as just the outlines. Like for instance, when I drew like a bunch of uh, cards, um, like playing cards, I filled in some of them, I colored some of them fully, and then some of them I did like out, only outlines. Um, and it kind of, like I said, it kind of just like gives a little bit of more interest or different interest to uh, your piece instead of having all of your shapes be the, uh, the same filled in color. Um, so I think that that's a really cool technique to implement sometimes. Okay, almost there. By the way, Annika, I am seriously loving your penguin, um, uh, your penguin um, 36 days of type font. It is so cool. I, I just love the, like the black and cream color that you're using for it. It looks so classy. I, I love it so much. It's so cool. You're doing a really great job with it. Okay, let's pull this down here like this. And just a few more lines here. And Sam just linked Annika's Instagram uh, in the chat. Yes, please go check out Annika. If you guys are not familiar with her work, it is, uh, she's been doing 36 days of type and it's been, she's been working on, um, uh, like I said, like a, a font that's got penguins incorporated in it. Um, and it, it looks so cool. I love it. Yeah. So, okay. So here is the final look of that. So now our shutters are kind of, they kind of read just white as the, the white background color. Um, and I think I actually like that. I think I might, I'm going to keep both versions. I'm going to keep the colored in version and the outline version. So once we start adding in color, we can kind of like see what looks better with the, um, the flowers and stuff. But I, I feel like I kind of like that. Um, okay. So let's turn the sketch back on. And for one, I'm going to, okay. So I'm going to go back up and I'm going to look at the the colors that you guys suggested. So pink, um, let's see, yellow, pink and yellow might be, yeah, pink and yellow might be really pretty. I like that combination. Um, we can also add in some other, um, some other flower colors in there as well. Let's start out with um, some yellow. I'm gonna go ahead and draw in some little tulips here. We could also, if you guys haven't seen the, um, I'm gonna save it really quick here and go back. The prompt list actually has this yellow on here and we could actually incorporate um, some of the um, uh, colors from the prompt list actually. That might be, that might be cute. 
So we have like this red and the yellow and the blue, and we can incorporate those two shades of green as well. And the mint color too. That might be fun. Oh, also you guys, um, last week, um, if you guys weren't here, our prompt was ducks in a puddle. And this was my final piece for ducks in a puddle. Um, we started out with doing the sketch on stream um, and uh, I ended up doing the coloring offline. Um, so here's the, here's the final piece. I'm actually really happy with it. I added some more tech, like different like pencil textures to the water. Um, so yeah, kind of just like experimenting a little bit more with um, just like adding mixed media elements to it. So yeah, I'm, I'm pretty happy with it. Okay, going back to our piece. Um, so I'll just kind of block in some of these tulips in here. Again, just trying to keep it a little bit rough and um, maybe a little bit kind of rudimentary almost. That's just, that's just my personal preference. I just kind of like that look that like, it almost looks like it was drawn by a little kid. <laughs> I like the shadows in the water. Did you use watercolor brushes for that? Yes. Yeah, so the water, um, I actually used, uh, my favorite watercolor brush by Kyle is called uh, natural edge painter. Um, number one specifically, I think there's like four different ones, but this one is a really cool watercolor brush because it kind of like blends into itself. Um, and that's basically all that I used for the shadows. I just did the layer of water like this with one brush stroke. And then I added in the shadows over top of it, like with a separate, separate layer like that. Yeah, I really, really love this watercolor brush. It's really cool. We might be adding some watercolor elements to this scene too. <clears throat> Um, okay, let's go back and add in, I think we can add in some greenery here. Got some big old leaves here in the front. If you notice, you guys, when I did this shape for the second leaf here, I actually left a very small gap in between the two leaves. That The reason that I do that is because I don't typically add outlines. Um, so if I'm making two shapes that are right next to each other that are the same color, I'll kind of almost create an outline in the negative space. Um, like this, it kind of just gives a little bit of separation between those two shapes. And your brain kind of just makes the connection that, oh, it's underneath, that the rest of that shape is underneath. You don't need to draw the whole shape. Um, and it kind of just gives, a like I said, it gives a little bit of a separation there. So if you zoom out, you can really see what it looks like from far away. I might even um, go in and just go make my, um, brush clear mode and just kind of make that gap a little bit more even like that. Hi, Phil, welcome to the stream. How are you doing? Um, okay, let's go in with maybe the uh, the lighter green color. Maybe we can add in some of these. Oops, I'm in clear mode still. Let's go back to normal mode. And so Annika, going back to your question about how I figure out what how much detail I add in the sketch, this is a perfect example. Um, like with all of the the greenery and stuff here in the planter box, as you can see, it's quite messy. I didn't draw every single detail in there because I knew that when I go in with color, I'm just going to kind of like throw in like leaf shapes, kind of implied leaf shapes. 
I knew I wanted these um, like hanging down pieces to be ivy, but I didn't bother like painstakingly drawing in every single ivy leaf. I just drew in enough detail that I personally can remember what I'm going to add in for the coloring process. So now because the coloring process goes a lot faster than the sketching process, I can just throw in like some implied like ivy leaves kind of like in the shape of what maybe an ivy leaf might look like. Um, of course, it's not perfect, um, but nor do I personally want it to be perfect for my style. Like I said, I kind of like keep things a little bit more rudimentary and just kind of like, like very loose and kind of sketchy. Um, but that is almost all the time we have. I'm going to fill in these last little, little ivy leaves here. And then we can go ahead and look at community entries. Um, I'm super looking forward to showing off some of these entries. There are so many, by the way. Um, you guys have just been crazy adding in all of these entries to Instagram. Um, and all, uh, again, I forgot to mention earlier, um, if you guys would like to participate in any of these prompts, feel free to do so. You can upload your work to Instagram um, with the hashtag uh, Adobe Live Power Prompts. And also don't forget to tag me as well in the description and in the image. It just makes it a little easier for me to find all of them. Um, and we can go ahead and head on over to Instagram um, and I will show off some of those awesome entries. Um, like I said, there's so many, I don't think we'll be able to show all of them, um, but I will uh, go through the list and kind of show some of my favorites that we, uh, uh, that we, um, that, that were um, uploaded. Um, okay, so for one, I wanted to show off this one because it is so cool. This little animation, oh my gosh. I also love this color palette. It's really warm and inviting, um, but it also has kind of like some of the, the cooler blue tones. Um, and I, I love the simplicity of just the window, um, but clearly like they, they added enough detail to imply that we are in fact inside because we're looking out at the little village on the outside. And then we also have our little cat friend with some books on the, the uh, windowsill and then just all of the, the little nooks and details um, in the wood that they added for the, um, the windowsill and also just the window panes in general. Uh, just, and then the animation is just beautiful. It's beautiful. It's simplistic. I, I just love this so much. Uh, Taki Kamari Art, thank you so much for your entry. I just love this. One of my favorites. Um, also, this one is super cute. Uh, this one was actually a combination of my prompt and also um, Elena Comte's prompt. Um, she added in this character from Elena's Draw This In Your Style um, and then, and then uh, used my uh, rainy window prompt for it. Very cute. Um, and then speaking of Elena Comte, um, she actually did an entry too. Um, really beautiful. I, oh my gosh, I always love Elena's, um, uh, textures. Her work looks like it's traditional. Absolutely. But it's not, it's actually done on the iPad. Um, so, so beautiful. Um, I really love Elena's color palettes too. If you guys would like to check out Elena's work, it's, uh, her handle is Elena Comte Studio. Please feel free to check out her stuff. Really, really beautiful. Um, also, uh, Moonchild Illustrations, another really beautiful illustrator. Um, she did this one traditionally with colored pencils. Um, so adorable with a little frog character. He's looking at his little ladybug friend uh, sitting on the windowsill. Love it. So beautiful. Um, also, let's see, where was it? Um, there was one that was turned in very early on. Um, and I thought I saved it. Here it is. Yes. Oh, I love this one so much. I, the teal color palette is so beautiful. And with this pop of this like orangey pink color in the middle with the terracotta pot, it really just makes the character pop so much from the background. Same color for the nose and the inside of the ears. 
Um, really, really well done color palette. Love that so much. Um, and then all the rain kind of like splishing, splashing on the outside. Um, it says rainy days in spring are for indoor gardening and drawing the greenhouse I wish I had. <laughs> I absolutely, totally, totally agree. <laughs> and then I'll look at all these ducks. Oh my gosh, you guys, they just kept coming in. Um, all these ducks in a puddle from last week. Um, so many beautiful entries. This one was so super adorable too. This um, this artist's original character. He looks like a little like Newt Newt dragon character. Like I don't know, <laughs> I don't know how else to describe him. But he's so adorable. This little candle and his and his little mug like sitting on his tummy. Oh my gosh, so so cute. You got to go check out their work too. Uh, Hugh Hanart. Um, so beautiful. The rendering is so gorgeous. That lighting. Oh my gosh, you guys. Um, all right. I think that's, uh, oh, wait, one more, one more. <laughs> um, Altia Caroline uh, did another practical scene with felt and she sewed the whole scene. I don't know if you guys have ever seen her work. I showed her entry from last week as well. This is her entry for this week. She also did a few of my draw this in your styles as well. Go check her at her work as well. So incredibly beautiful. I can't even imagine how much time goes into making each of these scenes. So I always have to show off this stuff. So, so beautiful. I just, my mind is blown every time I see her entries. Um, but yeah, that's about time. I'm going to get cut off, so I gotta go. Uh, but thank you all so much for watching and uh, I will see you next Monday for our next prompt. Uh, thanks all for hanging out and I'll see you then. Bye.